Okay, <clears throat> good day everyone. Um, my name is Andrei Romanov and uh, the theme of my work have been voiced. So um, I'll start right there. We investigate the light scattering problem. Uh, it is a problem when we try to retrieve uh, particle characteristics uh, through its um, um, uh, light scattering signal. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, this um, problem has a lot of um, approaches to solve, but uh, um, uh, the interesting one is uh, uh, spectral method for solving it. Uh, generally, it is um, um, it it. Um, um, it works with uh, frequency uh, in in the signal and connects the uh, main frequency with the, uh, with particle size. Um, so there are um, existing uh, explanations um, are mostly uh, mostly quali qualitative and. Uh, uh, related to uh, diffraction theory of, and existing for spheres. But uh, uh, there are works uh, which implement this method for non-spheres as well. So here we're going to answer uh, these two main questions. Um, what is... Uh, um, so what is what is what is spectrum and uh, how it affects uh, how particle characteristics affects this spectrum um, we're going to start with the um, rgd approximation in um, um, here unpolarized intensity is proportional to uh, this expression uh, where uh, where form factor um, uh, determines the form of uh, light scattering pattern. And here it is a uh, Fourier transform of uh, particles indicator function. Also, uh, we here we work with the um, KS vector, uh, KS light scattering vector uh, instead of um, regular scattering vector R. And uh, as you can see, um, intensity is proportional to square um, uh, squared uh, Fourier transform of um, indicator function. But uh, using convolution theorem, we can reduce it to uh, um, linear Fourier transform and uh, obtain uh, autocorrelation function of the particle. Uh, which means the intersection of uh, volume uh, as uh, presented here. It is important to note that this uh, function has a um, finite support, uh, um, the domain where uh, function uh, does not equals to zero. And um, this uh, support is proportional to the size of the particle. Uh, so, for example, for sphere, uh, it is uh, uh, have this uh, this uh, form. Uh, uh, further, uh, we can reduce the uh, three-dimensional Fourier transformation to one-dimensional by integrating um, autocorrelation function uh, over planes of uh, constant phase in this integral and obtain uh, integrated autocorrelation function. Uh, and uh, for sphere, it uh, will increase the, uh, the decay rate uh, at the support border. Um, I forgot to mention that um, um, it is, um, uh, it is has important um, important val uh, value because um, the decay rate um, uh, the decay rate cause to um, 
discontinuity, discontinuity in the um, in the sum derivative of the function, and uh, it will be um, it will be show further. So we okay uh, okay with this. Um, integrated autocorrelation function, our intensity can be represented as a simple Fourier transform in uh, uh, this uh, C coordinates uh, for sphere. And uh, all we have to do is to um, make inverse transformation properly to uh, get the characteristics of the sphere or the particle. And um, in experiment, we measure intensity in a certain range of uh, uh, theta, which corresponds to uh, C1 and C2 respectively. And also uh, it is common to use window with Fourier transformation um, with the henning winden function. So um, this leads to using uh, convolution theorem, this leads to uh, that spectrum will be proportional to um, convolution of uh, integrated autocorrelation function and image of the um, window function. Now, uh, we have to understand how uh, window affects the um, integrated autocorrelation function. Uh, first of all, um, we can um, uh, we can understand um, we have to understand how the function affects the infinitely smooth thanks for test function. And uh, in that case, when c one equals zero. Um, the uh, window image tends to um, take a derivative, a second derivative of the function, even in uh, uh, experimental conditions. But when C1 um, more than zero, all convolution vanishes. That means that um, our spectrum uh, determines only by um, only by discontinuities, uh, especially jump discontinuity in third uh, uh, derivative of uh, FS function here, here, and here. Um, and uh, that is why we obtain uh, peaks in uh, spectrum. Moreover, we can estimate the shape of the peak uh, using uh, this analysis. If we, um, the intensity is proportional to uh, Fourier transform of uh, integrated autocorrelation function, which consists of um, support function multiplied by uh, some polynomial. Uh, this polynomial leads to, um, leads to derivation, um, deriving, um, support uh, function image, uh, considering that, uh, that uh, <clears throat> we obtain this expression and uh, uh, substituting to uh, Fourier window with Fourier transformation, we obtain uh, this uh, form for uh, spectral peak. It, um, it allows us to understand uh, where, where the peak uh, uh, have to be located, uh, how window function um, affects the spectral peak and uh, so on and so on. Um, but, um, uh, all we, uh, but now we are going to consider how refractive index affects the uh, spectrum. In uh, uh, RGD case, 
this um, it, it is uh, linear and trivial, uh, but in next um, approximation, uh, form factor has uh, this additive, which is um, um, which is um, phase shift of light uh, traversed through the particle. Uh, and uh, general um, general results presented above uh, um, remain its um, uh, remains its uh, valid and um, mm, but uh, formulas uh, uh, but formulas transformed as follows and um, um, and uh, have more complicated form. For example, autocorrelation function has this additive, uh, which slightly uh, modifies uh, the integral, but uh, it still has a fi uh, finite support. Uh, and uh, integrated autocorrelation function and its connection with the uh, intensity uh, also has the same uh, form, but uh, KS vector replaced by um, KSM vector. Here the, you can see the definition. It can be considered as a uh, um, change in coordinates uh, in that way. Uh, also, uh, here you can see, um, here we can make the same analysis as done before uh, and uh, estimate the uh, peak shape in, uh, um, in WKB case, uh, which, uh, which determines by this integral. And um, uh, for example, in our um, experimental uh, conditions for this uh, uh, XE1 and XE2, we can expand uh, XE WKB in a Taylor, Taylor um, series and uh, um, obtain that uh, and obtain this uh, um, uh, this. Um, uh, peak uh, shift in uh, uh, this peak shift along the uh, spectral um, uh, spectral fre frequency axis and uh, this phase shift uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, caused by refractive index uh, which uh, mm, uh, which was uh, which was observed earlier in um, uh, as an empirical fact. So uh, summarizing up, we can say that uh, we obtained description of the spectral peak origin showed influence of window function. We have explained empirical facts. And as you can see from the previous slide, uh, slides, the work is not done yet and uh, um, but uh, has a great potential for spectral method improving. Uh, thank you for your attention. I uh, will be glad to answer your questions. Uh, thank you, Andre. We have time for one short question. Does anybody have a question? Please raise your hands. Okay, then I, I think we, we can continue. If somebody has question, you can use uh, chat. 